Derek West, 2020 King of the Hammers race report. This year would be Derek's 11th year racing King of the Hammers. To start the new decade off right, Derek debuted a new 4400 Jimmy's 48P Pro Chassis race car at the 2020 King of the Hammers. The new car build started December 6 when Derek and teammate Mick Henson made the trip out to Cortez, Colorado to Jimmy's 4x4 to get to work. The main chassis tubes were together and half of the welding had to been done. So Jimmy's crew, Derek and Mick, spent the next week working long hours on getting all the new components mounted on the new car and maybe one day snowboarding. The guys got back home on December 15th and Derek got busy making lists of all the parts and pieces that would be needed to assemble his new off-road race car. This part is a very time-consuming aspect of race car building, and it seems nothing is open or doing business in between Christmas or New Year's or the week after. About the 6th of January, the parts were beginning to roll in, so Derek, along with an amazing group of friends and family, came together to work night and day to complete the race car. It was finally done about midnight, Friday, January 31st. The team loaded up and were headed on the road from Springfield, Missouri to Johnson Valley. Valley, California, a short 24-hour drive. Pre-running and qualifying. The team arrived Sunday morning about daybreak and quickly began to unload and set up camp for the next week. By 11 a.m., they were out in the desert testing out the new car. Testing was going good, but they found some bugs that are pretty common with a new car build. They got the issues fixed and were quickly back at testing. Monday was another day of testing, photo shoots, and technical inspection. Tuesday was qualifying day and Derek was set to qualify in the power hour just after 4 p.m. It was also the day that Derek knew he needed to get some miles in on the new car, so they went ahead and ran the first lap of the race, which is about an 80 mile loop. Shortly after Derek ran qualifying, his official starting position was 27th out of 109 competitors in the 4400 class. This was further back than the team would have liked, but the placement was a perfect starting spot. Race day. Derek, with co-driver David Fox, had a smooth first lap with no issues and came into the main pit around the 15th spot. Out on lap 2, things were going good until Derek hit a large rock and damaged a wheel and caliper. I was coming down a sand hill pretty hot, and as I came around a hill there was a pinch spot that had the course going between two large rocks. I just couldn't scrub off enough speed to get the car in between them and I was drifting out pretty hard in the sand, said Derek. The team had to stop shortly after to put on a spare wheel and tire, clamp off the front brake line before continuing on. Derek was anxious about the stop and pressed on through the first of the rock trails, gaining some positions through the remaining field of competitors. About halfway through the second lap, the brake pedal was soft again and the team pulled over to find a loose fitting, likely caused from a rock kicking up and hitting the caliper and fitting. A quick tighten and bleed and they were on their way again and were making quick work of the rock trails. As the number 20 team was approaching pit 2, the car began to sputter and cut out. Within about a half mile of the pit, the car was at a stop and it was determined that it was out of fuel. After hiking to pit 2 and then back to the car with 5 gallons of fuel, the car was moving again and on its way to completely refuel in the pits. The car took much less fuel than it should have, meaning there was some sort of issue with the pickup system in the tank. Nevertheless, the team pressed on with a new plan to take fuel at main pit and pit 2 after completing lap. Two. They finally headed out for the third and final lap, however, about 15 miles in, problems struck again. The alternator was not charging. David radioed in to the main pit to have a spare alternator and a few needed tools to make the swap. Thanks to another fellow racer, the alternator and tools were delivered and now we know we need an 8mm Allen on board. The alternator was taken off, but upon removal it was discovered that the wire connecting the alternator to the battery had a broken connector. Derek and David fixed the wire issue and jump-started the car, and they were on their way again. The guys made it through the rock trails with a quick stop and pit two for a jug of fuel and were at it again. The final blow came just after clearing the chocolate thunder obstacle. They lost an idler pulley that could not keep the engine serpentine belt on. It was too far to hike to a pit or to get another racer to bring us apart, so we were forced to call the race. It was a good debut for the new race car, but the new bugs were just too much for KOH this year. Big thanks to David Fox, Chris Beck, Mick Henson, Kyle Keller, Richie Keller, Brandon Davis, Jason O'Neill, Travis Cook, Bill Bailey, Art Richmeyer, Thomas Cantrell, Wes Coat, Eric Middleby, and Chris Burrell. Our upcoming race schedule, April 6th, 16th through 18th, Bedford, Kentucky. June 24th through 27th, Crandon, Wisconsin. July 23rd and 24th, Pittsburgh, Tennessee. Special thanks to our partners, Nitto Tire, Yukon Gear and Axle, Jimmy's 4x4, Edelbrock Racing, ATI Performance Products, Rugged Radios, Rad Flow Suspension, Warren Winch, Liberty Mountain Fabrication, Griffin Radiator, PRP Seats, FK Rod Ends, PSC Steering, Show Me Speed, Trailworthy Fab, Spider Tracks Off-Road, North Star Battery, Slime, Dynamax, Laser Star Lights, Ibox Springs, Brannock Motorsports, Metal Conditioner Squared, Signature Synthetics, Wheel Wood Braking, KMC Wheels, Mega High 9 Differential. Hey, if you liked this report, or even if you didn't, please subscribe and like the video. But if you did like the video, please also share it. This race team and their sponsors will appreciate the effort. If you want your race report read, send me an email to dougsracereports at gmail.com.